you took issue with comments from Congresswoman Ayanna Presley. She reportedly said, quote, we don't need any more brown faces that don't want to be a brown, vo a brown voice. What? About that, you said, these are the words of the modern grand wizards of the modern KKK. You know, I'm sure, the KKK was responsible for more than a century's worth of horrific lynchings, rapes, murders of black people. How in any way are the views you're talking about comparable to the views and atrocities committed by the KKK? What I said is the Grand Wizards of the KKK would be proud of what they would hear her say because there's nothing more racist than saying that your skin color predicts something no, about the content you didn't, you didn't of your just say that You didn't just ideas. say they would be proud. You said these are the words of the modern Grand Wizards of the modern KKK. That escalated quickly. It is the same spirit. You're right about that, Dana. I think it is the same spirit to say that I can look at you and based on just your skin color, that I know something about the content of your character, that I know something about the content of the viewpoints you're allowed to express. For Ayanna Presley to tell okay, me that's... that because of my skin color, I can't express my views, that is wrong. It is divisive. That is it is a, driving hate that is in this a country. Debate. This is dividing okay, that our is country a debate. to a breaking point. That is a debate that is, that is based on nonviolent discussion that you just said you're using rhetoric, which yes. she said she's using rhetoric. Uh, there is, that's one thing. And another thing is to say that she represents and she is a, a modern version of a KKK, which, as you know, was dedicated to the subjugation and violence against black people. How, how on earth is she a modern Dana, grand wizard let's be intellectually of that honest. kind of organization? And in case you didn't know, this is what stupid looks like. Let's be intellectually honest and get to the heart of what this debate ought to be about. There is a worldview that says that the remedy to past discrimination is present discrimination. That if you're black or brown, you have to have a particular point of view. That's from Ibram Kendi. That's from Ayanna Presley, the people I quoted in my speech yesterday. But can There's you a have an intellectually have, honest says conversation that of who you are, when you accuse you have her to be able of to have being a opinion. grand wizard Let's of have the, the KKK? KKK. A little fight in you. I like that. Can you have that intellectually that honest is, discussion with that kind of rhetoric? Yes, I can, Dana, because the point, the point I'm highlighting is that even the people who, in good spirit, we all agree, that the KKK was an awful organization that is a toxic stain in our national history. So given that we can start from that point of agreement, now that allows us to say, well, who actually sounds more like that organization today? The people who are calling for more racial discrimination on the basis of skin color. So yes, I think that is an but intellectually it's not useful about starting point for a provocative like discussion the whole, that we need to have in this country. The whole country. point is the KKK that, the reality, wasn't Dana, just about is rhetoric. We have to speak openly. They lynched in this people. They murdered people. They raped people. They burned their and homes. And that was wrong. Simply that was because obviously wrong. Of Shut up. So, wrong. Okay, Obvious, so that, that, again, that is obviously a if wrong you want to have an intellectual done. discussion, do, do you think that maybe comparing her to the Grand Wizard and, and the, the notion of what she said to being a modern leader of the KKK was maybe a step too far? Or you stand by what you said? Why do you always have to be such a c I stand by what I said to provoke an open and honest discussion in this country. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. It jumped up a notch. It did, didn't it? Yo, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Benny Vivek, back with an absolute napalming of CNN. He's done this a couple times in recent memory. Last time, it was with Kate Land Collins blowing up the fact that American government didn't lie during 9-11. They did lie during 9-11. The American government admits they lied during 9-11. They lied about the Saudi connection to 9-11 and a lot of other stuff. Who man, you, why didn't some, why didn't somebody ask who let the hijackers into this country? It happened to be the CIA as an intelligence operation. Well, that's curious. Why can't we ask those questions? Because they're real. They're in documents directly from the FBI. Whatever. Vivek Ramaswamy blowing up that myth on CNN, leading, of course, to a lot of adult diapers being filled at CNN and a lot of panic on the airwaves. And he's back at it again. Vivek Ramaswamy defining what racism is. To Donna Bosch. Donna Bosch. The blink. She blinks so much. Oh. I am getting so tired of this style of CNN. This style of like interrupting the person while they're talking. 
One of my favorite podcast hosts in the world is Joe Rogan, one of my favorite talk show hosts, as he would, as he self-referentially refers to himself as Tucker Carlson. And what they do, what both of them do, is simply sit back and allow people to talk. Answer the question. And you can tell that Tucker Carlson disagrees with like half the stuff that's said on his show. So does Joe Rogan. But they sit back and let people talk. What is it with these CNN anchors? And they can't let people make a point. You notice how many times that Vivek was interrupted there when he was making a very like a, a very crystal point about the face of racism in society as defined here by Miriam Webster. Oh, what is the definition of racism? Well, the definition of racism is a belief that race is a fundamental determinant of human traits and capacities and that racial differences produce inherent superiority of a particular race. Well, of course, there's only one group of people who represent that worldview, and it's the woke. Woke and racists. They're the same people. It's like the, the great comedy sketch from Ryan Long. It's like woke and racist, like the woke, the uber woke, the uber leftist and the uber racist have always been the same person. The thing that Vivek missed in that is like, wait a second, Donna, Donna Bosch, let me bash you a bit and explain to you exactly what the KKK was all about. Because the KKK was actually all funded and founded by Democrats. It was created to attack Republicans because Republicans believe that all men are created equal and that God is the creator of all men and women. And that he loves us. The, the, like, do you do you disavow the Democrat Party for creating the KKK? That should have been the follow up there. I'm gonna give Vivek a call and I'm gonna give him a little. He doesn't need a ton of help, but like, you really, yeah, dude, that was the goal. That is where you should go in right there. And so the under, the the worldview that your race determines who you are, and that you are not an individual, but you are actually simply a sum of your skin color that is, uh, of course, propagated by people like Ayanna Presley, who is a member of Congress. And then talking about her race is, uh, again, like once again, like essentially stating that black people can't be racist, which is a lie. All people can be racist. Are you kidding me? That's the, the, that's the, that's the definition of racism. Ayanna Presley saying that she wants to see Ibram X. Kendi's anti-racist narrative incorporated into all legislation. Now, what is that? Ibram X. Kendi's anti-racism tautology is essentially saying that the cure for past racism is present-day racism. So we must be racist against white people to cure the white people racism of the past that was perpetrated by white Democrats, of course, like Dana Bash. In a discussion with... Ayanna Presley, even Rex Kennedy states, there is nothing right about white people as part of the definition of anti-racism. So at the very least, I mean, it's interesting, you know, at the very least, what you're able to see in these kind of discussions are, are them being intellectually honest. Democrat squad member Ayanna Presley accuses Vivek Ramaswamy of verbal assault by claiming she's part of the modern KKK. <laughs> oh, I love it. Into my veins into my veins. These people are sick, de degenerate racists. I mean, they truly are. They truly are, by definition, definitionally racist. And Dana Bash does this thing where she tries to effectively say that Ayanna Presley can't be racist because she's black. That's It's such an intellectually dishonest statement. And more importantly, to go through and not actually tell you the full history of what the KKK was designed to do. Go back and read the KKK's founding charter. The founding charter said the KKK wasn't going after black people. They went after Republicans first. If there's one person who can claim actual victimization by the KKK, it's probably Vivek because he's a Republican. Firstly, he also happens to be a brown person. And it was Ayanna Presley who was initially racist towards Vivek because she called him the brown face of white supremacy. Well, what does that say? Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are uh, proud of our friend Vivek. He's been knocking down these narratives uh, left and right. Some of this stuff went absolutely, has gone absolutely thermonuclear. Um, here's him talking to a pansexual reporter that tried to trick him. But our favorite knockdown drag out moment was with Caitlin Collins. Uh, Caitlin Collins getting, as she ever does the raw end of this interaction about September 11th. This was a just a banger, man. Check this out. Uh, uh, 
there's apparently a new owner at CNN, uh, and his name is Vivek Ranswamy. It looks like you're floating conspiracy theories with this defense of, I'm just asking questions. Well, when you actually quote me, those are my words, and I stand by them. So somebody else quoting me, putting words in my mouth, I have a problem with. But those words I stand by. You want to know why? Because we literally know the FBI, the 9-11 Commission, the U.S. government on down told us specifically that Saudi Arabia had no involvement. 20-plus years later, quietly declassifying documents, showing that not only did Saudi Arabia have involvement, it was a Saudi intelligence agent that received two of those terrorists that cl- crashed planes on 9-11, killing but the Americans But the question was, is 9-11 an soil, inside job? And, and you didn't say about. no. <laughs> Caitlin, That's you what just I think people pl- are Caitlin, looking you liter- at. Caitlin, you, you know what's really funny? You literally just played that, and you could play it for your audience again. He said, or do you believe everything the government has told us? And my answer was, I do not believe everything the government has told us but you see because the they point, lied. The point is and that I know it this game comes open. up, Caitlin, it, every time there's game, an outsider who comes in. It leaves the door open, Vivek. <laughs> it leaves the door open, and someone who's Caitlin, a 9-11 truther looks at that and says, that that's exactly lies. what I believe. You that think the government's a, lying about 9 I think the government has systematically and for a very long time lied about 9-11. And I think I'm the what only presidential exactly candidate who's told us the about? truth. Saudi Arabia's involvement. It is absolutely true but you don't that Saudi think that 9/11 Arabia was, an was involved job, correct? in 9 Of course not. And I've okay. never said it. <laughs> but, but the but media filters do create answer. a lot of It's not a media filter. You, you have to stop blaming the media. We're, I'm asking you about comments that you have made. And I'm telling you that the comments I made, the ones you just played, are indeed what I believe which was not that 9-11 was an inside job, but that Saudi Arabia absolutely was involved, and our government for 20 years lied to the American people about there it. There was an entire that 9-11 commission fact, report actually. on this. Yes, and it, will, and it lied, and it was false. And in fact, you know where that's coming out, Caitlin? There's now a case, a federal case in the Southern District of New York, where the government of Saudi Arabia is being sued by victims of families. Know, that's families, why this is yes. resurfacing itself. It is relevant, and it turns out in those declassified documents But there's a difference in, in asking questions about Saudi Arabia's involvement and the government's involvement and then pushing this idea that whenever what your comment about who was on the plane and then was 9-11 an inside job where you did not say no earlier. That's why it's important to clarify those comments, because otherwise it feels like you're towing at the line when it comes to conspiracy theories. Caitlin, I, it is, I, I, I am guilty as charged that I do not follow the establishment super PAC donor approved script on these questions, but I am speaking truth grounded in fact at every step of the way. And that's what's really elicited something of an anaphylactic reaction of the kind we saw in 2016 against a different candidate. But this time, I'm going to be grounded in principles and conviction, not just vengeance and grievance, well, which is you exactly you're grounded how we will in evidence. reunite That's this country. That's just simply what we were asking for. But Vivek Ramaswamy will, yes. will have to leave it there. Thanks so much for your time tonight.